You've called this the ultimate challenge. I went back and listened to your introductory press conference and you said this fires you up, this engages you, this takes you to a different level of satisfaction when you can help build a struggling program to a championship caliber team. So my first question, why Pell City? Well, my wife's from here, and so she's coming home. I'm from Ohatchee, grew up 30 minutes from here. And I started my career at Asheville, uh, up 16, 17 miles north of here, up 231. So St. Clair County has sort of been like a second home to me. I was there for six years. And, you know, I coached at Heflin for my, my first job. I did my practice teaching in Alexandria. My first, I, coached, I was head baseball coach in 1981 at Sachs High School. So this is home, uh, plan on retiring here. So that coupled with people saying, it was sort of like Alma Bryant, when we built Alma Bryant Mobile, most of my colleagues and friends said, are you, you're crazy to take that job. He said, that job will never win. It can't happen. And they'd never won. Now, the difference is we, we closed two schools, a 3A and a 4A, and put it together and made 7A. Uh, here's, here's a lot like that. We're not closing schools, but we're, we're starting here from scratch. I mean, this place has been really bad for a long time, and it's been, uh, I mean, the last time they were even decent was they won a playoff game in 2012. They won a, won a first round game when they upset Austin Vicator. Uh, before that, 2003, they were 12 and one. So it's been a long time that they've been that they've been struggling so and there's been no tender loving care there's been not a lot of planning and a lot of taking care of things you need to take care of to sustain a program and I think it just caught up with them and then they I'm the seventh head football coach since 2010 so been a lot of coaches come through here so I think they've recognized and realized it's maybe not all the coaching you know, that it's been other things that are factors for the reason that they have struggled so much. But the, but the bright side of it is, is our administration and our people in town are excited. They want this to work. You're always gonna have negative naysayers, people that are jealous, people that are, don't understand what it takes to build a top-notch football program, or an athletic program for that matter. Because not only football has struggled here, other things struggle too. Um, softball's had a little bit of success, but what I call success is championships, playing for championships, semifinal runs, quarterfinal runs, you know, you know, so playoff success, being 22 and 11 in a sport is, 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 is being average. Being a, fin being a champion or a semifinalist or a runner-up or even quarterfinals, once you get to that rim, then you start and sustain that for a period of time, that's when you start having a successful program. So I think football, you know, I think you know this, it led to Bannard at Hoover. When we won the first championship there, because we had 19 sports there, nothing was winning there big time either. But once we won that first state title in 2000, there were 44 more championships in my tenure there. So with football winning four more, but you know, but everything won except for volleyball. And then the year after I left, it finally won a state title. So I, I think we all gotta be pulling in the same direction. And I think we are, um, things have gotten better, um, but it's a, it's a long haul to get this thing to where it needs to be now. You talk about the struggles this program has had last year, one and nine, the year before that, two and eight. Uh, they, they haven't won more than six games since 2012. So when you come in and you kind of have to pour the foundation, so to speak, to rebuild this, what's the first thing you do? Because it could be overwhelming with so many different factors that you need to tend to. Well, first is mindset. You have to change a mindset. People talk about culture all the time, but what is culture? You know, it's the mindset of your athlete but it's also the mindset of your faculty, your administration, your student body. Expectation level is what I'm battling here. 
we have to have a higher expectation in everything we do from test scores to our golf team. Everybody has to have higher expectation and understand what it takes to get to that level. And I think that, you know, I've done this, this is my seventh school as a head football coach and each one that we've won and been a part of winning in all those places, you had to win a different way. We're not gonna win the same way here that I won at Hoover or in Mobile or Eufaula or Asheville or in, or, or in Georgia. You have to find out what the niche is and then you have to exploit that and really work those kind of things. You gotta find, I always said this, you have to find an edge somewhere. You have to. If, if the team down the road, if you're doing the exact same thing as the team down the road, you know what the definition of insanity is. Yeah, so we have to find where do we gain an edge? How can we gain an edge here? So we're in the process of finding those things out. Um, the administration has helped with that, with the money they put towards it um, that desperately needed. Um, I think, you know, we'll get there. We will. But I believe now we need new facilities in the worst way. There's no question we need new facilities. But, so you can't build new facilities right off the bat. So guess what? You have to invest in people. That's the number one thing that I came in here thinking, okay, I can't have a new field house right off the bat. We can't expand the indoor. We can't have this, can't have that. So take what you got, improve what you have, you know, which we've done a lot of work in this building that was built in 86, 87, sure. but you can improve your people. So we hired really good coaches and you know my track record with assistant coaches. Uh, I think we've hired a really good staff here. Uh, we've hired a lot of coaches uh, that needed to be hired to, to be on the same par with the Sarah Lands, the Spanish Forts, the Theodores, the Mountain Brooks, the Parkers, the Gardendale and, 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 even, and, and, and even Oxford. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to building a football program. It's gonna take time, uh, but I found things when I got here that were broke that we've tried to fix and that we're still in the process of fixing. And you gotta invest in hiring good coaches and you have to go down into the middle schools elementary schools, your youth football program, your your seventh grade team, your eighth grade team, your ninth grade team. Like we created a ninth grade team. They haven't had a ninth grade team here in years. And so with that, you know, that part, we fixed a lot of those areas. Um, like last year, they finished the season with 18 ninth graders on the team. Right now, we have 55 ninth graders because they're playing a ninth grade schedule. They have not been paying, playing a ninth grade schedule. So it's not hard to figure out why they've lost. There's kids here. There's players here. They haven't been developed very well. Uh, but there's, there's athletes here. Um, so we all need more athletes. I mean, there's not, Mark Freeman's gonna tell you he needs more athletes and he's probably right. There's deficiencies in every team. Key to it is is trying to cover up them deficiencies a little bit, and and using what you got. But uh, but we, what I was shocked coming in, is there were more talented players here than I thought. You are a massive personality coming back into this state. We've talked to coaches preseason that genuinely like you. We've talked to coaches that don't like you. At your age now, taking this job, do you care whether or not you're liked? Well, I, as long as I'm respected. That's all that matters because the people that don't like me are either hadn't been able to beat me or, or, they, or they are not very successful themselves and they complain. There are people that complain and because they don't get this or get that. So, you know, I, I think I'm respected. You know, I really enjoyed my time in South Georgia. I really did. It was, I couldn't have asked for 12 better years down there with the, with the type of football that was played on a high level. 7A football in Georgia is the big boy league now. Sure. You know, and I think when you go into a playoff deal, there's 32 teams that come in, there's probably 16 of the 32 can win it. So 
that's not that way here. Um, so, I, you know, I, everybody wants to be liked, don't get me wrong. Sure. Everybody wants to be liked, but as long as I'm respected, you know, I think I can live with that. But um, I've made mistakes, and I mean, I, I, I own up to my mistakes. I've made my mistakes. Five state titles at Hoover, two at Colquitt County in Georgia. You got seven state championships. You're 65 years old. Some would say, what more do you have to prove? Is coaching addicting, being on that sideline Friday night with the headset off? What, what, what makes you tick? What keeps making you say there's more for me out there? The building keeps me going. It's not the Friday night. I can do without the Friday night. It's the 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 16 hour Sunday. It's the the Friday night after the game. You put that to bed pretty quick. You start thinking about your opponent for the next week. It's the Saturday opening in that that book and saying, okay, this is our opponent. Where do we start? The grind of the weekly grind of 12, 14, 16 hours a day. That's what drives me is the grind and then you know I mean look I mean in the building of a program all these problems we got right now and they're enormous there's a lot of them but you go to bed every night <clears throat> I look over to my wife and I said you know what we got this done today we got this done today you know we've got to do this tomorrow we got to do this more so those are things that keep me going and gets me up every morning between 4.30 and 5 o'clock is because you got to hit the ground running. Of course, we practice early in the morning. We're on the practice field at 6 a.m. Uh, and then we come back in the afternoon and watch film and have a walkthrough. So our kids are going through pretty, pretty tough right now. But I think that those are the things I enjoy. You know, everybody likes Friday night, but I like the process. I like the preparation and like I said, the grind of the game of football. Since leaving Hoover in 2007, this will be your first head coaching job back here in the state of Alabama. How have you changed, not from a football sense, but as you mentioned in your press conference when you got here, both as a husband, as a father, and as a spiritual leader, as you like to say, how have you changed in these last 15, 16 years? I think I, I, think I am a better father. I think I am a better husband. I think I am a better leader. I, you know, when I was at Hoover, it was win at all cost. And, you know, I was such in a tunnel of, it was a monster. And we were feeding that monster like crazy. I mean, it was, I don't see how you could have done any more. Um, so I didn't handle my personal life, you know, right back then. And, but the people of South Georgia opened their arms. They, they offered me the job, they wanted me. And it helped turn my life around. And good so it is, and, it, and they were good to me. Yeah. The first person I met was a preacher. They're at the Presbyterian Church there in, in Moultrie. And we sat down and had just hours and hours of talk. And he was so good to me, so good to my wife, and just showed me a lot of perspective on things. And I think him doing what he did and then the people there just really embrace me so I'll always have a special place in Moultrie Georgia because I think it changed my life and made me a better person then I got throat cancer sure. stage four and another guy in town got it within three or four months at the same time I got it he died so I was fortunate because I came back to UAB to be treated and he stayed down there um, so I, I just think have I made mistakes? Yes. But the one thing I want to say that's not been said is that, you know, in the Valdosta situation, I was cleared of all wrongdoing. And so, but that don't get out there. You know, it, it's, it's the alleged this and alleged that, and then they never come back and write if you're cleared. You know, we wasn't recruiting. There wasn't no money that changed hands. You know, it's just some things that were said on tape that were edited that maybe I shouldn't have said, but they was never acted upon. So, but, and the good thing about the investigation there is done by the Attorney General's office. So they know what they're doing. So they thoroughly investigated it. And the only mistake I made about us, I bought some protein powder for my players uh, without a proper 
buying procedure. That was it. So, you know, the PSC cleared me on all that other stuff. So I'm, I'm feel good about that part. And, um, you know, so we all make mistakes. I'm gonna make more mistakes. I just gotta make sure that, you know, there's a beacon of light that's on me every day, eyeballs, and I'm under a microscope, we know that. And I just gotta be very smart in what we do here at Pell City. I don't wanna embarrass this program because I wanna live here for the rest of my life. So that's a big perspective that I have too, that look, these are people that, are going, that I'm going to see for the rest of my life and probably this is where I'll be buried, somewhere around here. So um, I, that's important to me too. You talk about your wife's from here. This is home for you. You want to commit to Pell City long term. Would you say this would probably be your final stop in your coaching career? I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I feel like, you know, I was miserable in 21 and 22, especially 22. Last year, you know, 21, I had COVID and was in bad shape, was in the hospital for a while. So, you know, but in 22 last year, and I enjoyed watching my son play at Piedmont. I think the world, Steve Smith, he's a great man. And I chose my kids to play for him. If they couldn't play for me, I chose Steve and I made the right choice. And Piedmont was good to my kids. That's a great school system, very high academic school and very good athletically too. So it can go hand in hand. So, but I just got to where I didn't enjoy living because I was bored to death, you know? And so um, I got stuck watching so many tennis matches. I love tennis and I got tired of watching eight tennis matches. Plus my guy had retired, Roger Federer, and I was, I was upset, so I just got the itch. And so when Kusa Christian called, and I had worked with them last fall. I would go over during the week and help them with their offense. And well, they go to semifinals. And I didn't go to the games because my son was playing. But, you know, I was very much involved with that program. And when they hired me, they took care of me and did what they did. But when this job came available, I told Steph, I said, look, this is our opportunity. It wasn't the right timing when Steve took it. You know, I didn't apply, I didn't reach out to anybody or anything like that. But when this time it came available, I said, you know what? The timing's perfect because they've had a coach here for four years that got really nothing done and not to be critical of him because he's a great person. Uh, for whatever reason, they just wasn't successful. And so, but I don't think you can blame their lack of success on him. I think he did all he could do because he's a good person. I just think, and then Steve comes in here, Hall of Fame guy, just won several state titles himself, and then he leaves up out here. So I was coming in at the best time, and I think that's one of the things that excited, that excited me, and is because I think I felt like the people of Pell City that really want this thing to be turned around. It was a really good marriage, good timing for us to come at this point in time.